Hello, welcome to the Stock Market Cookbook Podcast, episode number one in a series of investing guidance for beginners based on the book with the same name. My name is Jack Trammell. I'm a former financial advisor and I'm currently chair of the Sociology, Criminal Justice and Human Services Department at Mount St. Mary's University in Maryland. I'm also the co-author of a new book called The Stock Market Cookbook and with me is the other co-author, Guy Terrell. Guy is a former financial advisor, a former information technology specialist, and now he's a full-time writer and speaker. And today, Guy is going to join me. I'm going to serve as host. And on our first podcast, I'm going to interview him about the Stock Market Cookbook. So, Guy, welcome. How are you? Thank you, Jack. How are things going? They're going well. Today was a, a good day on Wall Street for me. And I enjoy that when it goes up. <laughs> I'll have to check mine later. And I appreciate you coming today to talk about our new book, The Stock Market Cookbook. And what I wanted to do was to ask you a series of questions and have you respond to them. And I think our viewers will be interested in this book after they hear you talk about it. So first of all, let's just start with uh, what is this book about, The Stock Market Cookbook? This book is a compilation of what Jack and I have learned because we sit down we sat down and discussed different strategies that were working and those that weren't working and we figured out what worked and what didn't and we have written down workable approaches to buying and holding stocks and that's the key holding stocks all this stuff you see on the Yahoo Finance, where people say, oh, these two stocks are going to go up 50% or 100% in the next year. That's just not accurate. You have to do your own research, and you have to be the steady hand at the wheel. So speaking of Yahoo Research, who's, who's going to want to read this book? There's a ton of stuff out there. Who will pick up or who will want the stock market cookbook? Whenever we have mentioned it, to friends of ours in casual conversation. It's amazing. They have all said um, they are looking for something different than what is out there currently, where people pump certain stocks or say, oh, this is the next great thing. And that's not our approach. The next great thing is you. You have to learn how to manage stocks. It's not difficult though and that's what we show you in this book. Well most people think it may be too much work for them to learn all of this and it must have been a lot of work for you to even approach a project like this. So what is it that motivated you to save people time by putting all of these uh, ideas into one easy place? What motivated you to do all this work? I have made so many mistakes over the course of my investing life that I wanted to figure out how to avoid those and approaches that do work. And everybody is afraid of the stock market like it's going to bite you. And it's true that any individual investor is a minnow swimming with whales. But so what? that they both coexist and you can coexist but you cannot you have to listen to your inner self and teach that inner self how to look at a stock how to evaluate it and purchase it and it's not going to kill anyone to do those steps well speaking of buying stock uh, how about you give us a sneak preview give us a stock tip um, this is a cookbook right so how about giving us a recipe Okay, um, one, one thing that we espouse is the slow cooker. For instance, about a year ago, I heard about, I read an analyst report on the company called Fox Factory. I think it's Fox Factory Holdings. The symbol is F-O-X-F. Should be able to remember that, F-O-X-F. They make parts to sell to original equipment manufacturers, OEMs, to put together bicycles to use on uh, 
off-road terrain vehicles and many other things that I can't think of right now. And it's, it's like a hidden gem. And at the time, it was like $88 a share. And the next time I looked at it, it had gone down. The next time I looked at it, it had gone up. And today, a year later, it's $156 a share. And who knows where it will go. But the key is to look at a stock, evaluate it, and say, is this stock for me? Am I willing to wait for the big payoff? Thanks for the slow cooker recipe. Um, I know that people are interested in doing this, but sometimes they're scared. Um, in your experience, what is it that stops people from jumping into beginning investing? Let me put a disclaimer before I do that. Let me put a disclaimer. Neither Jack nor I own Fox Factory Holdings. I watch a lot of stuff. I don't have enough money to buy every stock that I think is a good stock. But I like to watch as many as I can. And that's one that I've watched. And maybe one day I will be, buy some shares. And at the end of the podcast, Guy, I'll remind people that none of our actual investing tips are guaranteed and our views are our own and that there's no guarantee of success in the market. And when we mention stocks on this podcast, it will be as examples, not specific advice. So. Right. This is just an example. You find a company. I've done it over the years and you watch it and you might watch it for one, two or three years even and then buy it when it feels right for you or when you're ready to hold it for another five years. But in my experience, people are scared to start doing this. So what is it that stops people from jumping into this? We are afraid because we don't know enough and we hear all these pundits on TV uh, and CNBC all these guys talking and they're just talking a mile a minute and they look like they know everything and you feel very very intimidated by it but a stock as peter lynch said a stock doesn't know you own it hmm. so you don't have to be worried about it it's not going to say what did you do why did you buy me i don't you see how risky i am nobody is going to judge you it's nobody knows you own a certain stock or you bought a stock. You are your own boss. You are your own critic. You are your own congratulator when it goes up. And generally, over time, stocks go up. They hit big bumps in the road, big dips. But it's, it's, all, it's always been up. Look at Warren Buffett. So I think I'm hearing you say that it's partially about uh, getting some help from experts, reading people who follow the market. It's also about doing some of your own research and, and identifying some of your own interest and trends. Uh, but it's also about patience. Is that a good uh, summary, perhaps, of part of what's in your book, our book? Yes. We've, we've done a lot of reading of Warren Buffett and Peter Lynch. And somebody once asked Warren Buffett, What's his holding period for a stock he buys? And he said, forever. <laughs> now, I'm not suggesting that any stock is forever, but I'm saying that people have to hold stocks longer than five months. Five years, three years, at least three years, because it will go through various phases of gains and losses and you need to be patient with it. So imagine, imagine that you are sending, you're putting your uh, child into college. Well, a lot of times in the freshman year, especially the first semester, grades come out and you are very disappointed in what Johnny did at school or Mary. But you encourage them, and here's where your encouragement would be. To, if you if you bought a company that's doing well and it goes down, buy a little more, just a little more. Not don't bet the farm, but just buy a little more. And so the same thing happens. And you look at uh, your your child as as they grow and learn in college, their grades generally go up, and they get a career, and then they're off to the races. So that's four to five years in 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 college. 
and then it grows from there. And if you look at stock charts, just look at any of them, but go back a while, look at what they've done, and set your time frame to be longer than you think. So, Guy, um, I'm in Barnes & Noble, and I see this book sitting on a table there. Um, what's your two-minute elevator pitch for people who just pick this up and wonder what's going on? I assume they'll read the back of the cover maybe, but you're here with me now. What's your two-minute elevator pitch for this? If you thought that the stock market was not for you, you're mistaken. This book is your first step to opening the portals for a new way of viewing investments. It's not wild. It's not uh, pounding the table that, oh, look what we've done, look what we've done. No, we want you to be the captain of your ship, the captain of your portfolio. And we're there to help and provide assistance to do that. So I'm, as you know, I'm a sociology professor and I worry about things like inequality. Does the stock market perpetuate inequality? I don't think so. Uh, the fact is that more people who are, don't have means. Oh, that reminds me. This year, several big, big brokerages did away with commissions. When I first started buying and selling stocks, the commission was a hundred dollars. This was back in the seventies. Now the commission is nothing or maybe 50 cents or some minor amount of money. And so the barriers are down. The, it's like, it's like when they, when people went to Woodstock that, uh, the fences went down and people just came on across the field. And that the stock market does not have as many barriers as it once did. So do you see this book as something that could potentially bring income growth uh, to a much wider audience, to a much wider group of people? Absolutely. You could. This book is for people with modest, I mean modest amounts of money. Um, you could open an account at most places with $500 and you could buy some stocks and you could buy one share you can't buy some stocks because they're too exp the price is really high like amazon but you can buy shares of smaller companies buy one share and next month buy another share and just keep on going that way doesn't have to be big money big purchases it's the brokerages have set up so that you don't have to do that and you can grow it and live with those and live with the growth watch the watch the crops grow well i'm glad you mentioned that because that's a topic of a future podcast we've planned which is how to uh, make this process work with smaller amounts of money for people who don't have a lot of money to start out to begin with and we also earlier were talking about the question of patience and when and if to sell and uh, one of our future podcasts will also be some advice about how to know when to sell well I am co-author of this book and I'm still excited to read it again after talking to you um, do you have any final message to people who are listening to this? What else do you want them to know about this book that we haven't talked about so far? Years ago, and I'm an old man, right? Years ago, uh, I used to watch Louis Rukeyser's Wall Street Week. And it, it, uh, it was filmed in Maryland, and so they got this broker off on the, on the show who was a broker in uh, Baltimore. And his name was Julius Westheimer. And he said something I will never forget on one of those shows. He said, buy when you have money, sell when you need money. And if you, everybody is like, I want to buy this stock at $10 and I want to watch it go to 100 then I'm going to sell it and buy another one for $10 and watch it go to 100 And that is a hard thing to do, to find a bottom and a top. You just have to stick with it. But his approach, we have, we advise, we have a friend that we have advised and 
she needed money to repair a home that she had. And I said, just let's sell something. And she had to pay taxes on it, which is a good thing. Taxes, paying taxes on gains is a great thing. Do not mistake that. You can't win, lose that way. So we advised her, if you need some money, sell some of your stocks. And then we looked at what, what we thought would be um, harvesting, uh, harvest time. But that's the only way to do it. You can't ride all these trends. There are too many trends. Find your own trend. Well, Guy, I want to thank you for joining me today and letting me interview you. Even though we're author and co-author, we set this up as an interview. Thank you uh, for spending some time doing this today. Love it. I also want to mention to people that Guy and I have co-authored some other books, a couple of histories of Richmond, a book called The Fourth Branch of Government. You can find our titles on Amazon by putting in Terrell and Trammell, and those titles will come up. I also want to mention again that no actual investing results are guaranteed. And likewise, when we mention specific stocks, these are examples and not things we're actually telling you to specifically go and buy. And in most cases, we try to make sure we don't own any of the stocks that we talk about. Uh, the views on this program are our own and not our employers. And this podcast is copyright 2021. Thank you for joining us and look for the next podcast soon.